Hi, I'm Michelle Somberfield. Um, I forgot to check to see if my sound was even on here. Yep, it is. All right. Technical difficulties. That's what it's like when you make your own videos and don't work in Hollywood. <laughs> I have actually <laughs> um, made videos before, talked for like 10 minutes, and then realized I never had the sound on. And that's no fun when you have to reshoot a whole thing you just did. So anyway, it is Saturday. It's March 13th, 2021. And I thought I would just read another Monica Wishbriar poem. And I'm sitting here drinking my coffee out of my beautiful Ben Carson coffee mug. When um, <clears throat> the 2016 election was coming up, I guess it was really the year before, I started watching the different presidential debates when there were a whole lot of candidates and I wanted to vote for Dr. Ben Carson. So I got on eBay and I ordered a bunch of um, Dr. Carson bumper stickers and I think I have like six or eight of these cups because I ordered like two and then two more and then two more. <laughs> um, so I, I had a number of things like a keychain with Dr. Carson's name on it and some big magnets for your car, which eventually I ended up putting those on the refrigerator for a while. And um, yeah, so I, I'm drinking out of my Dr. Ben Carson for President coffee mug. And I, I just really like these cups. I put a couple of them away in this little cabinet above the refrigerator because everybody's always giving us cups or glasses for gifts like decorative ones and um it just gets to the point where we have so many it's crazy my boyfriend gets mad and he wants to give them away to goodwill and i'm like no no there's certain ones you can't ever get rid of don't just take things off to goodwill without telling me what you're doing because there have been times i've gone back to pennsylvania for a week and he'll just start cleaning things out and taking things off to to goodwill and, and i don't know what he's getting rid of and sometimes there are things we use <laughs> and um i'm all for giving to goodwill i've 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 done the vicious cycle before where you buy stuff and, you know, three months, six months, a year later, you end up taking it back to Goodwill because I, I kept buying stuff and buying stuff and then I needed to cycle it back out. So I'm, I'm not against giving to Goodwill or any other thrift store or, you know, wherever, you know, or give things to your friends or, or to the needy or whatever. But, um, <laughs> but some things I want to keep. So I did put a couple of them away and I said to my boyfriend, I put like literally a paper handwritten note inside one of the cups and said, keep these cups, you know, I don't want to get rid of them. But I'm always afraid because, you know, cups and glasses over time do end up getting dropped and, and chipped and, and broken. And I just want to make sure I at least have a couple of my nice coffee mugs that I like. I have a friend who's got me a couple Madeline Monroe mugs over the, the years and um, different things, you know, like if my boyfriend and his daughter go on a vacation together to like someplace in Florida or Tennessee or whatever, then sometimes they'll bring back something that has the name of that place where they stayed on it. So we just have so many, huge, huge collection. But anyway, <laughs> um, I thought I would read another poem, and this one's a little bit different than some of them. Like, some of the poems that I've been reading tend to be more blatantly sexual or about being scorned or, you know, that type of thing. I think this poem is about a woman saying, look, saying to a man, I've loved you for a long time and I'm going to continue to love you because you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. But I'm not saying I've never noticed anybody else ever. <laughs> you know, um, I know my boyfriend, he, he likes to talk about all of his different crushes, like different girls at restaurants or coffee bars or, or wherever, or a cute neighbor, or this and that. And um, sometimes it's just a crazy thing. But I kind of learned my lesson early on during relationships that there's kind of a, a double standard. A lot of times guys will speak their mind, but then they're not too happy 
if I speak up, it's like they can say 20 things in a row, but God forbid I say something. Oh my God, you know, it's like terrible, right? <laughs> so I've kind of learned to just um, kind of as a defense mechanism, I suppose, to say, oh yeah, I, I think so-and-so is really attractive and it'll be like someone on TV who I'll never ever meet or someone who I know is gay. <laughs> so, so the guy I'm with doesn't feel threatened. <laughs> but anyway, so this is a poem. It's called Freckles on Flannel. And I'm just going to take a nice drink here. <laughs> Mm. This is good lipstick. It doesn't really get all of your cups too much. It does get on my teeth though sometimes. It's it's very thick. When I first put it on, it's like so thick. It's it's made out of really odd stuff. It's like um semi-liquidy. Anyway, I'm going to go to the next screen and I am going to hopefully not mess up this poem too much. But as usual, I will have a hard time reading it, and I will be using my handy dandy um, Sherlock Holmes <laughs> magnifying glass. <clears throat> okay, so this poem is called Freckles on Flannel by Monica Wishbriar. <clears throat> As the light streams through the window, I see your naked form, lying on a flannel sheet, and openly I adore. For I do love the way you look and the way you feel. Everything I could desire, you prove to me is real. How long have we been together? More than a decade and a half? There is nothing more uplifting than when you make me laugh. For life is full of many things, pleasures and tribulations, but when I see you most of the time, I'm filled with sweet elation. You have been my faithful companion. You are my true friend. I have loved you more than others. God willing, I will to the end. So as the morning light does play upon your freckled arms, I am more than reassured. I wish to remain in your charms. I suppose what I should probably ask is if you feel the same, although it always seems apparent in the way you say my name. For you do say it lovingly, you say it with a smile, and in your eyes I see a spark, affectionate, beguile. I know you convey it all the time, you love our naughty exchanges, but I think it is more than that, and hope it never changes. So what then is all of this that I may ponder still? Please forgive that I am weak, despite my moral will. I do love you ever so, with mad unbridled passion, but at last I'm just a girl, not always in virtuous fashion. I did look across the way and was for sure quite smitten, with another gentleman whose flirtations were boldly written. And so, for a time I dared to think, I desired that destination, but for all of my common sense, t'would be an abomination. I wish not to callously hurt you, boy, of whom I am most fond. Therefore my foolish, silly thoughts must banish and be gone. I could never find another who gives me what you do. You are sweet and kind and sexy, mostly loyal and true. For what on earth was I ever doing pursuing a hard-nosed bloke when I can lay in your tender arms and enjoy your loving poke? This is what endures for long. This is what does last. Two who are willing to give and take Hearts open, deep, and vast. So that was Freckles on Flannel by Monica Wishbriar. And um, yeah, I, th I, th I think it's interesting. I had a friend 
I actually work with a bunch of lawyers. I'm a legal assistant. I work with a bunch of lawyers in a legal office. There's paralegals. There's an office manager. There's, I think, usually 14 to 16 of us, depending upon how well staffed we are at any one time. But um, one of the lawyers who retired a few years ago was really kind of like my best friend at the office. And he told me one time that a preacher or minister had told him about something called the 80-20 rule. And this is where a person might be in a long-term relationship and you, you know you love the person you're with, but then somebody else catches your attention. And, you know, no one person can meet someone's every single need. It's just the way it is. I mean, I can't meet everything that my boyfriend needs, and he can't meet everything I need. He doesn't even read my books. He doesn't even believe in reincarnation. Okay, for instance, that's an example. And there's things that, that are important to him that I don't really show a lot of interest in. Okay, he's interested in the stock market. He likes playing cards. You know, we have some different interests. But at the same time, we get along really great. And um, and, and if, if nothing else is proving that, I think the pandemic kind of does because we're in close quarters all the time. But anyway, um, it's very easy to be in a long-term relationship and suddenly to see that somebody else is attractive and to imagine that that's where excitement would be or that that person who you're really clicking with all of a sudden will be able to understand you better, will be able to open up you know, a whole new world for you, will be able to do something miraculous for you that you haven't experienced yet. It's very easy to believe that, to buy into that. But my friend said that, um, his name's Dennis, my friend said that this, this minister was saying that a lot of times people might leave their wife or husband that they've been with for 20 years or whatever and go have an affair and go think they're going to find everything with someone else. And then they find when they're alone with that other person, they only had 20% in common. They only really clicked on 20% of the things that were their needs. And so Dennis was pointing out that sometimes you can have 80% of wonderful with one person, but something new catches your eye and you jump ship and then find, okay, that person has 20% of what you want and it's really great to get it. It's re really like reaffirming and exciting and wonderful to get that 20%, but they've only got 20% of what you need. <laughs> 80%, 20%, mm, which is better, you know? So Dennis was making the point that a lot of people make foolish decisions because they think that something new is going to be more exciting and going to be more beneficial. And, and a lot of times people don't understand that what they're giving up is what they really wanted most of all. And a lot of times things are ruined. <laughs> he also told me this really interesting story about a guy who was married for a long time and he ended up having an affair. And the guy was a lawyer too, but he ended up having an affair. And when he had an affair, he was having a lot of email exchanges, a lot of electronic trails were left when he was promising this new woman a lot of different things. Well, he ended up divorcing his wife. He ended up marrying this other woman. They were together, I don't know, a year or two or something like that, but he, he couldn't get his, his wife out of his mind and he started having an affair with his wife again, the first wife, okay? While he's with wife number two, who he left number one for. So he goes back to wife number one and wife number two is very upset because she thought that she was going to have this wonderful life with him and he had made all kinds of promises to her. And so she ends up taking him to court to get some like spousal support off of him, even though I think it was in a state where that isn't the normal thing to get. And she was able to produce all these emails where he was promising her all the trips and the great house and the this and that and the future they were going to have together. And he was just, you know, really pouring it on thick with promises in writing. 
So even though he went back to wife number one and was with her from there on in, he then owed wife number two money for a long, long time because it's, that's, I guess, how the judge ruled. I don't know if it was a bench trial or a judge ruled it or if it was a jury trial or what it was. But so anyway, um, I think the 80-20 rule is, is an interesting thing that my friend Dennis told me about. And so I'm just going to pass that along to all of you because I know that a lot of times it, it's very easy to get all excited about a new flirtation or somebody younger or somebody richer or somebody who has new stories to tell or somebody who seems to have a lot in common with you in some certain area. The 80-20 rule would be like if I all of a sudden decided to leave my boyfriend for somebody else because I was so happy they believed in reincarnation and I thought they were cute, okay? And then maybe I would get together with them and find out that they want to live on the other side of the country, even further away from my family. Maybe I'd find out they have a bad temper. Maybe I would find out they're allergic to cats and I love my cat. You know, maybe I would find out that the only thing I had in common with them was maybe sex and that they believe in reincarnation. So again, um, I think this poem was about love and I think it's about looking at someone you've been with for a long time and appreciating them even when maybe it's tempting to look at someone else and so i just wanted to pass along um the wisdom that my friend dennis passed along to me after he heard a preacher speak about it the 80 20 rule don't forget it all right now that doesn't mean that if a relationship is abusive or there's something tragically flawed about it that you should never think about freeing yourself up. But typically you should be in a relationship before you get involved in another one. A lot of times, you know, overlapping is a really dangerous, bad thing. And it's not even actually all that healing because you have to first figure out what's really going wrong. And, and you don't want your new person to be a rebound relationship right? <laughs> you you want to heal from one situation so you don't pass on your problems to another relationship. And so you see that other relationship clearly as opposed to just seeing it as, you know, um, kind of like jumping from ship and just seeing it as a, um, a life raft. You know, you want it to be a fresh relationship that starts out good and solid in and of itself and isn't just a rebound. So anyway, that, that's a lot of craziness to talk about. Um, but I read that poem called Freckles on Flannel by Monica Wishbrier. And now I'm going to finish my cup of coffee and wish you a very happy Saturday. And I will be going to the gym later on and hopefully hopefully ordering some food i love chinese food i always want chinese food it's terrible i crave it um and i'm gonna enjoy the fact that i'm looking outside the window there right now and it's a beautiful beautiful sunny day so this is who i was gonna vote for president for <laughs> in, in 2016 but it, it just didn't work out so i voted for the man who dr carson was supporting Doc, or, yeah, Dr. Trump, no, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> and I say that proudly. <laughs>